Hi. And welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Earth. Good day. <laughs> welcome to the big show. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Mr. A here again with you. And the other day, some of you guys had uh, expressed a little bit of concern over scatter plots and negative correlation versus positive correlation. So what I thought we'd do today is take a look at one of the correlations together and see if we can figure out what exactly makes these correlations work. So today we'll, we're going to look at negative correlation. Okay, and just starting with, uh, with a typical graph, remember that a negative correlation, as one value goes up, it causes the other value to go down. So what I'd like to do right now is take a look at, um, take a look at two variables. We're going to take a look at the age of your car and then also the car's value. Now typically, if, if you don't know this just yet, the minute that you buy a car and drive it off that lot, it decreases in value, and it continues to do so. So as your cars get older, that means they decrease in value. Let's take a look at, uh, at a couple of examples of this. Uh, but first, let's look at the axes. Now, age. Somewhere in this region, that's a pretty new car. It's pretty close to zero, which would be brand new. So this would be a pretty new car, and then this is old as dirt down there on the right. Now value, this would be little money and this is big money. Okay, so as we increase, uh, as we move up the y-axis this way, that means that we increase in value. I'm not going to put a dollar amount on there, but we just kind of get the idea that as we move up the y-axis, it increases in value. So let's first take a look at uh, this car. Pretty nice looking Mercedes. Uh, from what I understand, this was Reggie Bush's Mercedes and he put it up uh, for a charity auction and it went for upwards of somewhere above $400,000. Very expensive car. It looks brand spanking new. And if we were to go back and graph that, it would be right here, new car, high value. So we could put the dot for the scatter plot right about there. And this would... This little dot right here would, would represent Reggie, Bu Reggie Bush's Mercedes, okay? And that kind of makes sense. It corresponds to pretty new car with very high value. And regardless of what this dollar amount actually is, that'll work for any new car. You just go down to the lot and buy uh, like a, a Toyota. It's still going to be new with fairly high value compared to a similar Toyota that's older. So let's take a look at, at another one. Now this one, uh, let's see, I don't think that anyone's been driving that in a while. Um, pretty old, pretty beat up, and it doesn't look like it's worth much. So if we go back to graph that one, I think you guys would agree that this is a pretty old car, so we're looking at somewhere over here with a pretty low value. So the dot for that would probably be somewhere in this area. That dot that represents that old beat-up jalopy uh, corresponds to an old car with a low value. Now, usually, once we get the extremes graphed, then we can pretty much tell what the rest of the graph is going to look like. For example, if we look at this graph, we, can, we know that the line of best fit, as we talked about, is going to look something like that. Okay, so my, not, my line's not exactly straight, but you get the picture. And the data confirms that as you look at similar cars, as they advance in age from new to old, that those values tend to drop from higher amounts to lower amounts. So that would mean that the, that the actual scatter plot data would maybe look something like this, that as we progress with age, that the value of the car goes down. And it should follow suit, that as we do that, it will pretty much follow the line of best fit, and it should meet the two points on the outer edges um, 
at the extremes of each axis that we just looked at. Now there's one more thing to consider that we talked about as outliers. And an outlier, here's an example of one. I forgot the name of this car, but it's really rare and very old. And uh, it's worth over a million dollars. So if we were to graph this, then this would look like maybe somewhere up here. It would correspond to being very old, but worth a lot of money. So this outlier right out here, the classic cars, we'll call those an outlier. Okay, and that outlier represents cars that are really old but still worth a lot of money because they're rare or because they're highly sought after by, by different people. So uh, this represents a negative correlation. So now we kind of have a better idea of what makes a negative correlation. And um, then in a few days, we'll take a look again at, at a similar uh, set of pictures and data for positive correlation. So right now, we'll just focus on negative correlation, what makes that work, and uh, we'll continue discussing this in class. Take care.